that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Um, I came before you last year at the Vermont Monitoring Council to talk a little bit and make a little bit of a pitch for a Water Monitoring Council. Vermont Monitoring Council, Vermont Monitoring Cooperative, it's sort of like the same acronym and really an idea of the same general intent. However, um, I think that what we have in mind uh, from the state agency with respect to a Water Monitoring Council is a little bit more focused on integrating some of the type of work that's being done from the BMC side with some of the water monitoring work that is done by the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, a little bit by the Forest Service, a lot of it by the Agency of Natural Resources. So the basic premise here is that there is need for water monitoring information. There's more need than any individual provider can produce. Um, and so, you know, the list is fairly long, federal, state, municipalities, watershed lake associations, private sector businesses, individuals, all are interested in the condition of surface waters in Vermont. And while some of these are producers of data, not all of those producers um, produce all the data that they need. And not only that, not every consumer of data knows the sources of data that they might go to, whether it's water temperature, water quality information, or what have you. And so I want to kind of, uh, I'm going to step away and try and make my point of this slide, but this is the general gist of the point that I'm trying to make. I ask you, so which is the most cost efficient? We collect data once and use it a whole bunch of times, or do we collect data a whole bunch of times for a whole bunch of individual research projects or individual inquiries and use it to answer the question of that particular research project? I think this is inefficient. And I think this is where we're trying to get in terms of this integration through VMC. And it's where we as a state agency are trying to get in terms of integration of our water monitoring data. And so I came before you last year with this idea of a water monitoring council. And with USGS kind of pitched the idea. The idea being, let's get all the stakeholders who are either producers or consumers of water monitoring data together so that we can learn what our respective needs are learn who's producing what, learn who needs to consume what, identify the gaps, and then be able to sort of fill those gaps to the highest and best use. And so we went forward. I'm going to have to stand back here because I can't really project this is a massive screen. Um, we went forward over the past year, and I want to thank Heather Pembroke, who's sitting in the very far back corner of the room, for helping with this process. We coordinated a set of meetings with stakeholder organizations VMC was involved from the get-go and invited. The nascent Vermont Association of Watershed Associations uh, was invited. Um, many, many different entities, including Forest Service, were invited. And so we got together just to talk about the idea and to identify prospective roles. There seemed to be a reasonably good interest in develop a mon developing a monitoring council. And so we went forward and drafted some draft mission statements, some draft goals, some draft objectives. I had the opportunity to travel to New Jersey to speak about some of the work that I do on behalf of the state while I was there. Uh, I had a chance to attend the New Jersey State Water Monitoring Council meeting, which was very informative. And so the idea behind the Monitoring Council for Vermont is really about maintenance and relevancy of long-term networks. It's about reliability of data. It's about using it more than once, collecting it once and use it a bunch. It's about stability in a long-term networks. VMC, we have this awesome concept of a 200 year time span. Who designs 200 year research projects these days, right? So we need the stability. We need to be able to make sure that that information is being collected over time. And it's useless if people can't access it. And over, you know, more and more and more, people are going to want access to information, more information they have the capacity to digest. And so we need to be able to serve it in a way that's digestible. And therefore, that would ensure its relevancy. So the perspective on data availability, and I'm kind of speaking about this modern council as if it exists, and it doesn't yet. It's a glimmer in mine and other people's eye. But bottom line is there's a significant cost to monitoring, op operating monitoring networks, OK? It costs us hard dollars, taxpayer dollars. We acquire grants. VMC acquires grants. You go for it, you get data. It costs money. It should be used more than once. And I'm bringing up volunteer networks here as well because um, volunteer-derived data is cost-efficient, but it is not cost-free. There is a cost to maintaining volunteer networks as well. 
And so because there's so much investment in this, this information should be made available freely so that everyone can use it with reasonable accommodation for needing to publish and so forth. But we need to be able to provide it. People need to be able to get it. It should be understood in terms of its data quality. And there's some really neat opportunities with modern information technology. Our colleague from BMC Data Managers in the other room talking about iTree right now, which is one option. Our agency, Natural Resources staff, are working hard on developing data access and delivery tools so that it's not just data, it's information, information people can use. So getting the word out is what we were trying to do over the past year. And so we took a, a lesson from the state of Oregon who initiated the development of the Oregon Water Monitoring Council by conducting, conducting a survey. And I think some of you would have received the survey in this room. And it was partially a survey to find out what people were using and what people needed. And partially it was kind of like a push-pull to get information out there about what actually exists, where the data sources are. Uh, and so we contacted, um, we went out to over 200 individuals in Vermont, um, which seems like a lot, but doesn't seem like a lot at the same time. Uh, contacted feds, state, local government, watershed and lake associations, the Water Environment Association and Northeast Rural Water, so those are your water treatment folks, and your water, drinking water purification folks. Um, and we went out to our consulting engineers and technical services folks. These are the people who are doing work for applicants that come before the agency for permits to do things like build ski areas or um, homes and houses and so forth. And we got a reasonable response. And so, in terms of who's responding, um, because we cast a wide net amongst state government, there's a lot of state government respondents, but notice the, um, the response level amongst nonprofit environmental advocacy groups. Uh, much larger, for example, than local governments or for-profit businesses. The for-profit businesses are the ones that are the consulting firms doing the work for the applicants. I submit that there's a need to get more information to those folks. It would cost their clients less to develop original data if they had access to some of ours. And in terms of the major role, the vast majority of the data are used in either a regulatory or a planning perspective or an advocacy perspective, which is good. We want our data to be used to drive regulation, to apply regulation, but we definitely want our aggregate information to be used by advocates to make positive change. I mean, look at the Lake Champlain dialogue that's going on right now. That's under, or under buttressed by a tremendous uh, data, data rich uh, data source. So, the kinds of water information that are being used by folks 90% of the people are looking for water quality data. Almost 80% of the folks are looking for stream flow information. We're gonna, you're going to hear more about stream flow information as I go through here. And on down the line, but I just want to emphasize those two things. Surprisingly, uh, limited interest in groundwater, groundwater level or groundwater quality or well data, although those data are available. Uh, I would have thought there would have been more pull, but I guess the folks that I went out to are more surface water folks than groundwater. Um, in terms of whose data are served and used most often, it's kind of uh, interesting to see that our data are used the most in the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, USGS second volunteer monitoring data are used tremendously. But look at this, 60% of the people are using their own data sources. And yet look at all these prospective data sources that are out there. And there are very nice repositories for that information. Uh, and here they are. So our website, the Vermont DEC website, which provides access to certain project-specific data sources, is used a lot. USGS NSIP, National Stream Flow Information Programs, this is the gauging network. So 64% of people are accessing the gauging network. And we've got information on the frequency of access and so forth as well. Um, the Agency of Natural Resources, Atlas and BioFinder is a big one. Um, but then at the same time, you know, half the people are calling in, hey, can I have data on this, can I have data on that? Which is great, but it's inefficient for them and it's inefficient for us, and we can provide them, we can provide them data, information, again, geographically, visually, physically, uh, electronically, that's better. And then going down the line, I'm um, sort of don't want to belabor this, but I do notice that modern cooperative, people don't know about it, and it's a really rich data source that people don't know about it, at least the people that we contacted. And the, I think the interesting and important point there is that the people we contacted are the people who are using the information in a regulatory framework. They're using it for planning purposes, town, you know, town zoning revisions, to do permits and so forth. So we want to take this, 
when we want to move it up, and I think there's some opportunities for that. Check out Slurac, which is the data repository to which a vast number of these other data sources send their information. This is the ultimate repository, and yet very few people use it directly to get information. That's because it's really hard to get data out of Slurac. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not with the mic, so I mean, you, people couldn't get that thing back. So what's missing? Um, what do we need more of? Are the current data adequate? Well, in most cases, you know, only 40% of the people say that uh, I've got what I need. 60% of the people say I've got some of what I need, and only 4% are saying, you know, no, there's not enough. Um, and in terms of seeing more, it's water quality, it's stream flow, and it's stream geomorphology that are the apex sets of information for water information. Um, so this is in this is very useful information to move forward. Um, and so the last question, I think the last question we asked before getting into the next steps here, and the last question I'm going to present to you all, is what should a council do? And the vast majority are talking about data accessibility and communication. More people are talking about getting the word out of data accessibility than are talking about getting money, than are talking about data compatibility. And believe me, data compatibility, information compatibility, you can like spend years trying to get that together. But more people want to know where it is, and more people want to get access to it. Um, and only half the people say we need more water data, which is interesting, but nearly everybody says we need better communication. So there's significant interest in the idea of a Vermont Water Monitoring Council. 60% of respondents want to get more information, but 80% want to be involved, so that's a weird finding. We must have mis, um, miskeyed our survey, and yet I do want to point out um, this survey was conducted by the U.S. Geological Survey by their like social survey specialist down in Reston, Virginia. This wasn't some homespun thing we did off the survey monkey. This was really well executed and incredibly quickly executed too. Uh, only 30% of people want to come to meetings. So 80% of people want to do stuff. 60% of people want to know about what people are doing, and only 30% of people want to come to meetings. So. There must be a story in there, we'll figure it out. We also asked about uh, planning and, and executing a forum. Uh, folks are interested in general sense on participating in a water monitoring forum. I think there's an opportunity for that kind of thing. I think it would be need to be well crafted in order to be valuable. There's so many different meetings that happen in Vermont around water quality and water management. We need to do it right. So bottom line, from the, what we learned from the survey and our work over the past year, there's a lot of interest in Vermont on availability of data, and there's a lot of interest in Vermont on some coordination, prospectively through the idea of the Water Monitoring Council. And while the state is the largest producer of this information, there's a lot of users, there's a lot of consumers out there, there's a lot of needs. And so, you know, really what we're seeing is an expansion in the availability and the reliability and the maintenance of the water quality data streams, and most assuredly, the, the stream gauging networks. So that's really going to be our first focus, uh, is on the stream gauging networks. And that's because that the funding is very tenuous on the stream gauging networks, as everybody knows. So right now, as we speak, we're setting up a web page. The USGS is going to host that for us, but on behalf of all stakeholders. I am drafting a letter to go out to all survey recipients and other folks like the list from this meeting, um, thanking them for their interest, thanking them for participating in the survey, letting them know about next steps plan to circulate the results of the survey uh, in mid-January. I want to invite anybody in this room to a meeting at our offices on February 13th. We've tentatively picked that date. Um, just yesterday, I went talking to Keith Robinson from the USGS. We figured we'd get a date and then you know, go from there. I'm calling it a council coordination meeting, but it really is uh, anybody who wants to come can come and become part of this. I'm trying to set out some more milk and let cats come to the table. And, and see if we can build something out of it, uh, just the way we have with the Watersheds United of Vermont, which is a new watershed association. Um, I would like to propose, or I'd like to also coordinate a session at the Northeast Association of Environmental Biologists meeting. That's the last week of March in Burlington, a 200 person regional meeting uh, dedicated towards water science. And um, both a and and GS are very interested in pursuing the idea of multi-partner funding for the gauging network. And I think this council provides an opportunity for people to be able to quote unquote buy in 
or support the gauging network, but at a small level so that people can do what they can. This just provides the opportunity to, uh, for the on-ramp to do that. So for more information, you can contact any of these characters here. This is, uh, there's funding provided to the effort from my good colleague, Diane Switzer, EPA. Keith Robinson is providing logistical support for the GS, and, and Heather and I are doing this work on behalf of A&R. So that's my story, and I hope you will come and join us on February the 13th or in the end. Thanks. Yes. Well, I didn't get a chance to ask you. Thanks, folks. Uh, please come talk to me if you're interested in this.